So good morning. Um, so um, in the last class, we were essentially uh, looking at different types of uh, crash test uh, videos, uh, particularly, uh, and we have seen different uh, uh, crash test configurations, uh, whether it is full frontal barrier uh, impact test or uh, with the offset uh, frontal impact test or pole test or side impact test. Uh, rollover test and so on. There are many types and there are many variants and then individual types. So this is what uh, uh, we have understood in the last class. Uh, and today we are going to look at an important uh, test that is called a moderate overlap frontal crash thickness evaluation test. So this test uh, procedure is in full detail that we are going to go through today. So that we will understand right from uh, what is uh, supposed to be the uh, uh, testing condition. How do we prepare, start preparing the vehicle? And um, what are the different uh, uh, instrumentations uh, uh, and photographic technique that go in uh, um, doing the measurements? And then um, uh, in detail measurements, uh, uh, how are they been uh, done during the crash testing? And what are the measurements are made and uh, what are the responses out of these measurements? So in uh, very critical and detailed uh, uh, study or, uh, is what is that uh, I have planned today uh, for this uh, class. So if you have understood this, uh, this uh, uh, test preparation and instrumentation, all whatever that we are going to discuss today, would be uh, employed in an another uh, test configuration that we were briefly looked at in the last period. So we are class, uh, this particular class is very specific to a study of uh, moderate overlap frontal crash worthiness evaluation. <clears throat> so uh, for that, let me just share uh, my slide. So everyone is able to view this slide. Uh, this is lecture number six uh, and we are in uh, uh, module two crash testing. And as I said, uh, the specific topic for today's discussion is moderate overlap frontal crash worthiness evaluation. So we'll just look at briefly uh, what we were doing in the uh, last period. So we just had an idea of uh, what all the aspects, the content of this module that we are going to look at it. It's uh, starting from types of crash, rollover test, regulatory requirement for crash testing, instrumentation, high speed photography and image analysis. So these are all something uh, one should be aware of when you say uh, you understood crash test. And types of crash test we looked at uh, and uh, the configurations, uh, impact test configurations in two modes, uh, uh, crash test mode one and crash test mode two we have seen. Uh, and then uh, what are the kinematic uh, variables of a crash pulse? So, you know, crash pulse is uh, uh, acceleration or deceleration time history measured during the event of crash test. And uh, if you are to understand uh, the measurement details and uh, you are supposed to understand the various kinematic variables and those are these nine variables is what we have seen. And these nine variables are basic definitions uh, and mathematically they are defined uh, through these expressions. And um, uh, we have also looked at uh, what are the test procedures in brief uh, for a different uh, um, uh, types of tests recommended by Euro NCAP, uh, National Car, uh, New Car Assessment uh, Program. So we have looked at these different variant uh, tests that are possible. Uh, movable progressive deformable barrier test, uh, full width uh, rigid barrier test, uh, mobile side impact barrier test, side pole test, far side impact, and whiplash. So whiplash is very interesting that whiplash test is to see how uh, uh, the head injury is involved during the uh, collision of a vehicle from the rear. <laughs> when, uh, when you drive a vehicle and uh, there is a collision from the rear of your vehicle from other vehicle, uh, then suddenly uh, there will be uh, uh, a kinematic uh, observation uh, with the uh, uh, occupant driver's head and uh, there should be an appropriate head restraints uh, to avoid 
such kind of uh, uh, weight um, uh, uh, injury, right? So, uh, continued with that, uh, apart from occupant in a vehicle also, the pedestrian cyclist uh, and their rescue uh, applications all are the latest test procedures and recommendation uh, by the uh, <coughs> Euro norms or uh, FMVSS norms. And uh, the ratings uh, that we have looked at, uh, there can be uh, uh, six ratings uh, uh, in Euro norm. And uh, there are some advanced uh, thing. And we also looked at how this uh, Euro norm uh, uh, crash test uh, 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 ratings are evolved from its uh, uh, starting from 1997 till date. So we were looking at some of the interesting crash test videos to differentiate uh, these types of crash tests uh, and to understand uh, the complexity of uh, uh, looking at this shortest duration event, right? Because everything gets over in few milliseconds. Uh, maybe the rollover test may take uh, an observation of some few seconds. But if you look at apart from that, anything that are tested with barriers or poles are um, uh, ending with uh, in a second duration uh, observation. So such a, an important uh, uh, videos uh, have given us the clarity of what are these crash tests all about. And uh, we also have looked at some interesting uh, treasure videos uh, from um, Institute uh, Insurance Institute for highway safety organization. So these are some recommended videos that if you go through that would uh, append your understanding of this topic. So this is what essentially in the last period we have seen. And today we will look at uh, in specific this moderate overlap frontal crash worthiness evaluation. So in this we will see uh, right from step one till end what all that go into conduct of this test. So if you look at, uh, I'm going to have a presentation in two headings. One is test conditions and preparations, execution of the test. Another one is the measurement and observations. So test conditions, if you look at, so impact speed and overlap is what is defining this moderate overlap frontal crash test. So offset barrier crash tests are conducted at these particular speed. So 64.4 plus or minus one kilometer per hour, so 40 plus or minus 0.6 miles per hour uh, with this 1% uh, with the overlap of 40 plus or minus 1% overlap. So what do you mean by this overlap is clear from uh, this figure. So vehicle overlap with the deformable barrier. So this is the barrier and uh, this vehicle. So if you see this overlap from here till here is what is this 40% uh, overlap. So that is uh, uh, clear from this. The test vehicle is aligned with the deformable uh, barrier such that the right edge of the barrier, this is the right edge of the barrier, faces, uh, uh, right edge of the barrier face is offset to the left of the vehicle center line by 10 plus or minus 1 percent of vehicle's width. So vehicle width, so this vehicle width is de uh, uh, defined by SAE, uh, uh, Society of Automotive Engineers or way other surface vehicle recommended practice, these codes, that it says, uh, what is the definition of the vehicle width, right? The vehicle is accelerated by propulsion system. So you should see that there is, uh, it is not driven, it is there is a propulsion system mechanism um, that would be pulling this vehicle towards the barrier, right? At an average acceleration of 0.3 G. So uh, 0.3 G means you know at what rate uh, from start uh, to the near of the barrier, the speed is increased until it reaches the test speed, the test speed of 40 miles per hour and uh, it reaches. So if you see that it would be just 25 centimeter before the barrier, that speed would be uh, reached. So at that time, what does that is required is the complete brake system to be uh, invoked uh, uh, so that uh, vehicle would be just hitting it as a uh, uh, no moving elements in the vehicle, right? Only that entire vehicle will get into the barrier. So the uh, onboard braking system, which applies the vehicle service brake on all four wheels is activated one second after the vehicle is released from the propulsion system, <clears throat> right? 
and uh, continuing with that if you look at the details of uh, barrier and uh, uh, barrier and the proportions uh, proportions the dimensions so the barrier is composed of three important elements it's called the base unit extension and deformable base so you can see this is base unit so you can see here it's top view and the front side view this is a side view so from the top view if you look at uh, you have a base here so this is base unit and then you have this extension from the base and then you have your uh, deformable faces so this is deformable faces that means this part is again in detail given here with the dimension so that is of honeycomb structure so which is going to absorb the uh, energy that's why it is deformable barrier faces so you would have that uh, uh, deformable face uh, again uh, uh, with the uh, uh, further fine detail that it would have here so it's given here the base unit dimensions and the extension dimension and deformable face dimensions are all given clearly the face is attached to the extension of at a height of 20 cm from the ground so this if you look at uh, see this is that height so 20 centimeter height it has been placed so here so it is not touching the base uh, ground the profile of the uh, deformable face is shown in this figure three so uh, you could see that uh, what would be the length and what would be the um, profile so uh, you, you could see this uh, here uh, this 65 centimeter is what is height and 33 centimeter is what is this portion and that is what is uh, here called as uh, uh, face deformable face right so uh, if you look at further uh, you have uh, there is something called uh, this inch tape so inch one inch incremental uh, uh, one inch increments alternating in black and yellow so yesterday's video you could have seen this uh, tapes with this black and yellow color is applied to the right and leading edges of the top surface both bumper element and base to highlight uh, them for the overhead camera view so this tapes essentially to capture the um, images so you have uh, those are called uh, um, uh, tapes uh, or uh, cage so in addition both barrier surfaces are marked with the 61 centimeter length cage consisting of two circular photographic targets so you could see there is a belt with the alternative color of uh, um, black and yellow and with a circle that's what is called uh, uh, photographic targets so 61 centimeter length cages of that uh, uh, four numbers are used uh, in the vehicle so that we would see uh, as we progress and test vehicle preparation when you see uh, the vehicle check for prior uh, uh, damages if anything is present any repair is present any missing parts or fuel leaks are there this all will be first checked so that's what is called the vehicle check before the test all engine and transmission fluids are drained so this is important drain from the vehicle prior to the test the gasoline is removed from the fuel tank and the fuel lines and replaced with the stored solvent stored solvent to 90 to 95 percent of uh, usable capacity the engine is started for a short period to ensure the solvent has filled the fuel lines the electrolyte is drained from the battery the air conditioning systems refrigerant is recovered by means of that complies with the applicable environmental regulations so these are all important precautionary uh, uh, aspects that go in before the conduct of the test so removing a fuel and uh, so replacing it with solvent why it is so because after the test we need to see uh, the leakage and uh, we have to look at the leakage samples on the solvent that would uh, help us to go ahead with uh, um, ensuring uh, fuel integrity uh, that's maintained uh, fuel tank integrity uh, that's maintained after the crash so that is why this kind of test uh, or uh, this precautionary uh, preparations are important <clears throat> 
So continuing with this uh, test vehicle preparation, uh, if you look at there are vehicles with the electric powered vehicle or hybrid vehicle. Uh, so in such cases, the high voltage batteries in vehicles with full electric drive trains are tested at a state of charge that's called of 12.5% plus or minus 2.5% with a minimum of 25 miles of travel capacity on the battery. So this is must. To avoid the possibility of hybrid system attempting to begin a cycle uh, of charge, uh, that is uh, engine start, the high voltage batteries in hybrid vehicles will be tested at a minimum of uh, SOC. What is SOC? State of charge recommended by manufacturer. So maintenance fuses are not removed. So that's important. They should not be removed. Maintenance fuses are not removed. But additional pre-crash or post-crash precautions specified by vehicle manufacturers are followed. Equipment uh, will be added to the high voltage system in accordance with it. So equipment will be added with a high voltage system in accordance with the manufacturer recommended procedures for monitoring electrical isolation as per FMVSS 305. So this uh, number 305 uh, is for an electric vehicle crash testing. So this electrical isolation test is what is recommended by that to be uh, checked as a precursor. And the thermocouples also will be attached to a high voltage battery to detect a temperature increase that may indicate a thermal runaway condition. So what would be the temperature in the batteries to be monitored? And uh, again, if you look at the front of the vehicle is attached to the propulsion system. So now the test vehicle preparation after this uh, precautionary measures are taken, then the vehicle front is attached to the propulsion system via chain that are either attached to a steel hook welded to the left and right side of the subframe of engine cradle or to flexible straps that are wrapped around the left and right side of the suspension subframe or engine cradle. So this is how that has been uh, connected to tow or to pull the vehicle. The rear of the vehicle is attached to the propulsion system with a nylon strap and ratchet strap assembly. So you see the front end that would be there. That means the vehicle will be pulled forward and the tension will be there at the rear attachment belts. And that will go with the mechanism of pulley arrangement and the entire mechanism would be underneath of this test uh, pad or the test track uh, over which the vehicle is pulled. So uh, this mechanism helps us to uh, propel the vehicle for the execution of the crash test. Right. So the front and the rear attachment hardware weighs 10 kg and aluminum instrumentation rack which supports the test equipment is installed in the cargo area of the vehicle at the rear. The carpeting in this area is removed to allow access to the floor. If necessary, the spare tires and accessory jack may be removed to permit installation of instrumentation rack. So the complete instrumentation uh, for such test, frontal test, are uh, being occupied uh, with the uh, cargo area of rear uh, end of the vehicle. The following test equipment is installed on instrumentation rack in, located in the cargo area. So what are those instrumentation? Onboard emergency braking system. When activated, the system applies pressurized nitrogen gas against the brake fluid in the lines to the rear wheels. The remaining brake fluid in the master cylinder is removed. Flexible hoses connect the emergency braking system to the brake lines in the engine compartment. The onboard braking system weighs 10.6 kg. So this is why this all weighs because this all are important because after all it's a mechanics. So uh, what would be the change in linear momentum and uh, energy loss uh, uh, is what all uh, to be. Uh, the overall assessment of their event. So the mass factor is very important. So uh, your addition of uh, uh, these instrument weighing uh, should be compromised with the uh, overall vehicle weight. And 12 volt battery and monitoring system. The system supplies electrical power for the vehicle, emergency braking system, driver, driver 
diversified diversified technical system sorry diversified technical systems data acquisition system and wireless bridge for uh, this uh, data acquisition system communication so the system weighs 35.2 kg and the wireless device for uh, data acquisition system to network communication is mounted to the outside of the vehicle weighs 1.5 kg an onboard lighting system this is very important because you have to have um, many images uh, uh, during the um, event uh, to capture the uh, occupant uh, dummies kinematics uh, so onboard lighting system is very essential so the system includes an array of onboard lights and its electrical power supply the lighting system is installed when a vehicle is equipped with a side curtain airbag that is expected to deploy during the crash test and uh, obscure camera views specified by this protocol this protocol so um, uh, the test vehicle preparation is very meticulously done right so that's what we have been looking at and uh, continuing with that uh, you see uh, the test vehicle preparation the test uh, weight of the vehicle is 100 to 175 kg greater than the measure scrub weight so you know what is scrub weight weight of the vehicle as delivered by the dealer with the full fluid levels of the vehicle if the vehicle test uh, uh, weight needs to be increased to fall within the range steel plates are added to the instrumentation rack if the weight vehicle uh, test vehicle uh, needs to be decreased weight of that need to be decreased non essential non structural items are removed from the rear of the vehicle that's what is this spare wheel and uh, other accessories uh, jacks and so on which is normally present all will be uh, removed <clears throat> a steel plate is welded uh, to the floor of the rear seating area along with the center line of vehicle for mounting accelerometers the carpeting in this area is removed to allow access to the floor if floor mats uh, floor mats are standard are offered as an option uh, through the manufacturers or dealership the floor mat is installed only in the driver foot well <clears throat> and then uh, the anti lock brake system if equipped daylight running lights if equipped are disabled so this is important disabled by means of removing fuses and uh, relays to those devices to reduce the electrical power required for the test a plastic block containing an array of high intensity light emitting diodes leds is attached to the hood of the vehicle with the seat metal screws the leads the leds are illuminated when the vehicle first contact the barriers And then pressure sensitive tapes so this is very important so pressure sensitive tape uh, switch is applied why because this is to glow switch is applied to the vehicle such that it makes first contact with the barrier during the crash test pressure applied to this tape completes an electrical circuit that signals the start of the crash that is uh, time zero for data acquisition system and uh, illuminates leds mounted on the hood so this is very important so you have your data acquisition system instruments all so when to start measuring is important it is not that you start uh, activating them and do it so it has to be triggered to start measuring so that trigger to start measuring cannot be done uh, at the time of uh, even so it has to be done um, by an automatic switch so that's what is uh, the role of pressure sensitive tape and that starts at the time zero and uh, communicate and instruct the acquisition system and uh, other sensors to all to act and uh, continuing with that you can see this figure exterior surface marking so this is also very important so we have seen there are four 61 cm length cages right you have uh, many uh, inch tapes inch tapes one inch tapes uh, which are uh, like this um uh, alternative with the red and black color so you could have seen in this videos uh, it is completely uh, 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 no pasted with the tapes in many locations so we will understand those important locations in this slide so the exterior surface of the vehicle are trimmed 
with the inch tape and photographic targets. So inch tapes are this length, photographic targets are represented by this circle. To facilitate uh, analysis of high speed crash films. This, this scheme consists of uh, four 61 centimeter length cages. So where are those presented? Those are presented on surface of the roof. So you have one at the surface of the roof. The same is here. And uh, the surface of the hood, surface of the hood is here. The surface of the driver door, surface of the driver door is here. So you see uh, in US, the vehicles are uh, uh, having the driver seat on the left of the vehicle, right? And a vertical um, plane passing through the central line of the driver seat. So vertical plane passing through, uh, where is that vertical plane passing through the central line of the driver seat? That is here, that is here, right? So this is that location. So these are the four places these uh, cages are uh, um, pasted. The location of vehicle accelerometers and the location of vehicles pre-crash center of gravity are marked with the photographic targets applied to the appropriate top surfaces of the vehicle. So these uh, are the location of accelerometer and this is the vehicle center of gravity location before crash, pre-crash, uh, these all are there. So why these markings are all there? After the crash, you would be able to uh, see their uh, locations and then to make an assessment of vehicle uh, damage. An additional target also is placed uh, at the rear of the vehicle on the center line, that is here. This is an additional target. The location of uh, 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 driver door latch uh, left rear door latch and driver shoulder belt uh, upper anchorage uh, D-ring that is uh, here. This is what is called a D-ring are marked with the side surface with the photographic targets. So these photographic targets would have a communication with the high speed uh, cameras uh, which are located in the crash test environment. So these are the targets and uh, what would happen those uh, you know, would be nicely captured. And then the steering wheel is highlighted with the inch tape. So the steering wheel would be uh, highlighted with the inch tape and uh, the left front tire is highlighted with the white paint. The left tire here would be highlighted with the white paint to determine the vehicle alignment with the barrier at impact. Inch tape is located at 39 and 41% of uh, vehicle width. So that you could see here, there are two inch tapes here one at 39 and 41 percent of uh, this. So this would be the overlap with the barrier in front and the barrier is deformable barrier. So this is how the vehicle uh, is prepared on its surfaces uh, for uh, um, capturing uh, accelerations by accelerometers as well as these tapes and cages are uh, marked for uh, photographic films analysis. And then continuing uh, the driver's head restraint preparation. So that head restraint, what is there in the vehicle is adjusted upward until the top of the head restraint is uh, level with the top of the dummy's head. If the head restraint lacks sufficient height adjustment to reach the top of the dummy's head, the test is conducted with the head restraint set as its highest setting. The head restraint's height adjustment locking mechanism if equipped is examined to ensure the mechanism has engaged. So this is very important. The head rest, uh, driver's head restraint is important and the preparation a check is very important because you see that the dummy's head is going to have a severe deceleration uh, levels um, uh, and that would have a heat in the vehicle. So to prevent the injury, these head restraints are important. All manually adjustable head restraints tilting mechanisms are adjusted to their uh, full rearward position during the test. The driver seat manually adjustable inboard armrest if equipped is adjusted to the lowered position. So, so detailed preparation of uh, um, the uh, 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 head restraint system and other passive restraint systems in the um, uh, vehicle. So all doors are fully latched. This is important. See, all four doors are fully latched but not locked. 
but however there are automatic locks uh, in the thing however if the vehicle is equipped with an automatically locking doors that cannot be said to remain unlocked when the vehicle is in forward motion the doors locks are kept in their automatic state if it is uh, so all side windows are lowered so side windows are not closed right but you could see there are test where uh, uh, the it is not lowered and uh, you know um, it is uh, the glass pieces are uh, coming in so in this particular test protocol all side windows are lowered to their lowest position the ignition is turned to its on position and the transmission is shifted to the neutral position so this is important so what is that gear uh, is it in what gear to be kept it should be in neutral position prior to the test and then the preparation of crash dummy and its setup so as we have seen in the last class the 50th percentile male hybrid 3 dummy with instrumented lower legs is positioned in the driver seat a dummy is equipped with feet and ankles the feet includes two accelerometers and ankles prevent metal to metal contact that results from bottoming of ankle bumper bumper the dummy's knees are equipped with ball bearing sliders and the neck is fitted with the neck shield in addition uh, standard dummy's thoracic spine to accommodate an onboard data acquisition system so there is also onboard data acquisition system so the thoracic spine of uh, the dummy would have that uh, uh, instrument measuring instrument the dummies used in these tests are calibrated after being subjected to no more than five crash test so every uh, um, um, five crash test at least it's completely calibrated the dummy and the vehicle are kept in a temperature controlled area where the temperature is maintained at 20 to 22.2 degree celsius uh, and the relative humidity of 10 to 70% for at least 16 hours prior to the test see these are all very uh, detailed uh, uh, precautions are the necessary uh, steps of dummy preparations the driver seat belt is fastened around the dummy the vehicle with the continuous loop lap shoulder seat belts the slack from the so there uh, the there should not be any loosen that uh, it should be intact so that all would be uh, uh, taken care to see there is no uh, loosen uh, belt portion so that is uh, what is in this paragraph is written so the dummy's head knees and chins since are colored with see this coloring is what is very we have seen dummy paint with the uh, grease paint to facilitate the post crash identification of impact with the vehicle interior so photographic targets are placed on both sides of the head to mark the location of center of gravity of the head so this is all uh, the uh, things that go in for how the test dummies are <laughs> prepared and uh, this said for the test so now coming to photography so there can be two uh, photographies that are made one is still photography that is pre and post uh, event uh, uh, final images to capture and then high speed motion picture photography so still photography what is that the pre crash and post crash condition of each test were uh, photographed two pre crash views and two post crash views show the side and left front quarter of the test vehicle additional photographs documents uh, the pre crash position of the driver dummy including close up views of dummy's legs three standard views of vehicle uh, in its post crash position in front of the barrier are recorded additional photographs documents document the Uh, additional photographs are taken to document the post crash position of the driver dummy so there are many still photographs are taken and these are the few important samples to be finally uh, reported in a report <laughs> then high speed motion picture cam photography so motion picture photography is made of the test with six high speed digital uh, images so high speed camera six high speed cameras along with the real time cameras 
the coordinates and the lens focal length of each high speed camera are given in this table and this picture. So if you look at uh, there are uh, six position A, B, C, D, E, F. So it's overhead, uh, rear oblique uh, vision uh, from at the rear oblique position uh, and um, uh, wide left, medium left, barrier and uh, passenger tight. So you could see them here lettered in this figure. So what is this? This picture here is what is referring to our barrier setup. So this base extension and then you have your deformable face. And uh, A is what is uh, overhead. So the uh, coordinate is at the barrier uh, left corner at the ground. Right? So if that is so, then the camera left top corner. If that is so, camera A is uh, positioned here uh, like that. So X is uh, uh, in front of this, this location. So you could see uh, this coordinate to understand uh, the locations of these six uh, cameras, uh, high speed digital cameras. So the reference for that is uh, uh, clearly mentioned in this uh, barrier. So you could see this, this is nothing but the guide, the slot uh, where the propulsion system pulls uh, the front and uh, uh, in a controlled manner. That is why uh, you have a rear nylon belts also. So that would be a loop and that loop would be operating uh, and that loop uh, motion would be uh, such that uh, it would have 0.3 G acceleration level uh, so that it would reach the necessary speed just in front of the barrier at not hitting the barrier with that speed in front of the barrier and then all the brakes of the wheels are actuated and then a vehicle uh, would be just uh, uh, left to hit the barrier and uh, the test is carried out. <clears throat> That's what we have seen uh, so far. And then uh, so far what we discussed uh, is under the uh, part of test condition. Now let's look at uh, uh, measurement and that observation. So measurement means the total weight of the vehicle. The total weight of the vehicle is measured at each of the four wheels. The vehicle is weighted with all test equipment installed, including the driver dummy. The front and rear axle weights are used to determine the longitudinal position of the center of gravity of the test vehicle. Then the impact speed. So impact speed conditions that already we have discussed. Then it's interesting to see this overlap. So you could see this inch tapes with the photographic uh, uh, spots. Right. So. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> the test to overlap is verified from the video uh, taken at high speed digital imager uh, overhead view. So the position A in the previous slide that we have seen. So position A is what is this. So this uh, camera is what is there here. So if you look at the coordinate of this is in Z coordinate C 910. So 910 centimeter means it is at the top. It is uh, not at the no. so, so from there barrier it is very uh, above. So it is almost 9 meters, right? 910 centimeters means it's what 9 meters above. So it is in the ceiling, like in the test uh, environment. So from there it is seen, and that photographic picture is what is this. <coughs> so it is very clear here, this offset uh, are there. It, at the time of contact, the outboard edge uh, of the deformable barrier in this figure should fall within 39 and 41 percent vehicle width uh, uh, inch tape on the front bumper of the vehicle. So that's what that's why these two are marked. One is 39 and one is uh, 41 from the uh, wheel, uh, vehicle center line and that offset uh, uh, this should fall within this uh, 39 to 41. So you could see exactly that is in this in between that. Uh, and that is what is captured with this uh, camera position at location A. Um, uh, if the target fails outside this area, if the target falls, sorry, if the target falls outside this area, additional analysis will be conducted to determine the actual offset. Right. So this is what is something overlap and that is ensured it's maintained during the test uh, with the precise uh, um, requirement. And then uh, additionally, you see what are the other measurements, the uh, vehicle acceleration measurements, fuel system integrity measurement, 
high voltage system integrity measurements for a fully electric vehicle or hybrid vehicle uh, testing this is important uh, if it is of uh, engine based uh, vehicle then uh, vehicle acceleration and fuel system integrities are um, tested so vehicle accelerations uh, you have a vehicle coordinate system and with reference to that uh, you have the sensors mounted and uh, uh, accelerations are measured during the event and fuel inter system integrity, if you look at, you have uh, this observation about fuel system integrity are recorded for each test. And the uh, stored uh, fluid uh, leaked from the fuel system within one minute after the impact is collected as a first sample. So as it is hit, there will be leakage of the fuel. Uh, uh, the fuel line filled with this fluid. We have uh, completely removed the fuel and then it has been replaced by this uh, um, uh, started uh, fluid uh, and that fluid leakage is within first minute uh, is recorded as a first sample and uh, this is typically done by how is it been done? It is uh, by soaking, soaking up the fluid with an absorbent pad of known mass. The second sample is taken after five minutes immediately, the first sample is taken. Then the third sample is taken after 25 minutes immediately after the collection of second sample. The pans are to collect um, the second sample or replace with the clean empty pans. The volume of each sample is determined by dividing the weight of the sample by the density of uh, stored fluid. Um, so you get this. So the last time of uh, last time is uh, determined using stopwatch. The entire process is recorded with a video camera equipped uh, with an intern, uh, internal timer, which displays the time of each event. So you see the camera films, if you watch, it would also have the uh, running time uh, okay, uh, available there. So this is something very important uh, as far as fuel system integrity uh, assessment point of view. And high voltage system integrity that is as per uh, uh, FMVSS 305 uh, to see that um, the batteries retention, uh, electrical isolation for high voltage all are uh, maintained or not. At the same time also this uh, uh, temperatures in the batteries also have been recorded to see is there any thermal runaway conditions. And um, importantly, uh, the uh, intrusion measurements, what's happening post crash assessment, if you look at the vehicle intrusion, anything there in the cabin, so that all to see a total of 14 locations. See, this is very important. 14 locations are marked on the driver side, interior and exterior of the vehicle. And their longitudinal lateral and vertical coordinates are recorded using the coordinate uh, measurement machine. So that would uh, precisely measure uh, even the smallest uh, least count. Um, these same smallest least count in micrometers it can uh, measure. So these uh, same marks are measured after the crash using the same reference coordinates. So, so the reference coordinate system uh, reference is used to pre and post uh, uh, measurement using uh, accurate uh, measuring machine uh, called the coordinate measuring machine. Uh, you could see that uh, this coordinate measuring machines are used for any uh, manufacturing of components uh, through NC machines. So you see that you can give you a precise measurement, right? Okay. The intrusion of the steering wheel, uh, instrument panel, and foot wheel, foot wheel, uh, relative to the driver is calculated by subtracting the average component displacement. That what is that difference between pre-crash and post-crash coordinates? A four average word is because of four uh, seat attachment, um, uh, four uh, seat attachment bolts, uh, which are which also were measured relative to primary coordinate system from the respective components of displacement of each of the target locations. So this intrusion measurement is very important, uh, so that uh, one can see that is there any uh, um, uh, change in uh, uh, occupant cavity and the cabin and what is the coordinate system used here is what is mentioned in this uh, the two paragraphs we may go through uh, then uh, let's continue with this so what are the measurement location the 14 locations so you have measurement location steering column there is one accelerometer 
Um, so, say uh, um, uh, what is importantly measured here is uh, the displacement are measured, right? So the following locations measuring uh, the vehicle intrusion. So what does happen to steering column? That's one point. And lower instrument panel, there are two points uh, importantly looked at. And brake pedal, one point. And uh, toe pan, uh, that's there are three points. And left to foot rest, uh, one point. Seat belts, typically four points. A pillar, one point. B pillar, one point. Uh, so these all add up to 14 locations. Uh, what are the intuition? Uh, uh, is it happened? If it is so, how much it has happened? Are all uh, important uh, uh, um, measurements uh, to assess? Uh, is there any intuition? Then dummy kinematics and contact locations. So dummy kinematics are studied by reviewing the high speed film using a film analyzer. Contact of dummies head or knees with the vehicle interior are recorded on the basis of post crash grease paint deposit. So you could see in those videos, uh, you know, as the air block, uh, airbag deploys, you see that the paint on the dummies head faces are uh, having an imprint on those. So those, those uh, things are very, very important. So that's what is called uh, dummy paint, pre-test dummy paint called. So the dummy is inspected in its undisturbed uh, post crash position. So post crash position, it is not going to be uh, disturbed. So you have to take as it is uh, the dummy uh, uh, location and the position. Any damage to the dummy or unusual dummy test, uh, unusual dummy resting position information is noted. The location of paint transferred from dummy to the vehicle interiors are noted. A high speed film record is used to estimate the time after the start of the crash. After the start of the crash, when various events occur. For each event, the camera that provides the clearest view of the event is used. The start of the crash is considered to be the first frame in the film from each camera uh, in which the LEDs mounted on the hood of the vehicle are illuminated. The time recorded for each event is based on the number of frames elapsed from the start of the crash and, uh, and the nominal operating speed of the camera. The camera operates at 500 frames per second. There are 1000 frames per second cameras also there. But in this particular test, uh, the camera specification is 500 frames per second. Uh, taken. The estimate of crash start uh, time can be up to 2 milliseconds late the event time, events time. As determined from the film can be easily or late by 2 milliseconds. So the time of driver airbag deployment, full uh, inflation and first dummy contact are recorded as well as any other notable event. So what are the very important uh, notable event is the airbag deployment at what time happens when it is fully inflated and first dummy contact. These timings are very, very important. This can be noted how if you are using high speed uh, uh, cameras. So the dummy responses, if you look at uh, what are all the uh, dummy responses measured importantly. Each hybrid three dummy is equipped with an instrumentation for measuring the following. So you have an accelerometers and uh, you have a triaxial angular rate sensors mounted at the head. We have seen at the head, what is that? Head acceleration is what is something that is important. So you have a triaxial accelerometer of this type. These all numbers, codes, all are the specification by the suppliers. Right? So those uh, that's very important. And then neck. So A to P shear force. What is that shear force? And uh, axial force and moments. So these are all again uh, from the neck to measure. Chest. So you have seen in chest. What is that? Uh, the deformation of the uh, uh, means um, uh, deformation of the chest. So the load cells are there. Apart from that, uh, you also have the triaxial accelerometers and rib compression to measure what is the force that is acting. So this is all uh, the instrument that go in for to assess the injury in chest. And lower extremities. So lower extremities is um, uh, the lower part of the dummy 
tumor tibia upper tibia uh, lower tibia and uh, foot accelerations is all are measured and these are the specification of the accelerometer so all uh, uh, with this you can also have clearly uh, this uh, dummy, this is the last slide that I'm finishing it uh, now. Uh, dummy clearance measurement definitions, right? So you should understand this. So you see uh, dummy placed here and the posture uh, ho holding on the steering. You have these all markings are made like AA. So what is AA? So ankle to ankle length. So this is ankle and this ankle. So this distance is what is AA. So like that, uh, here uh, this is all uh, specifications uh, definitions are important. So what location, what is the code and uh, uh, definition of measurement. So these all measurements are made. So see the dummy is uh, uh, an instrument basically, right? And they are basically called what? Anthropomorphic uh, <coughs> test devices, ATD they are called. So we have one module in our course to study um, uh, in detail uh, what are these ATDs, how uh, um, they are um, uh, used in the assessment of injury mechanisms and uh, the injuries during the uh, real-time collisions uh, through the crash test. So I, I'm not going through all of them. However, I, uh, you can go through this and then you should uh, go to this. So your quiz, uh, it will be based on this particular lecture. So I wanted you to go through each and every detail of this and to <clears throat> remember, try to remember or document yourself so that uh, uh, your understanding of this particular uh, moderate speed offset frontal impact crash worthiness evaluation would help you uh, uh, to uh, have your assessment for your upcoming quiz. So I uh, leave it like that. Uh, at this point, uh, you have any doubts, you can please ask at this point of time um, before I stop the class. Do you have any doubts? Hello, sir. Yeah, Akash. Sir, um, in the slide number seven, you have mentioned that dummies should be brought to a temperature of 20 to 22 degrees Celsius and uh, yeah. somewhere around 75 percentage humidity of why humidity. is that sir yeah uh, that's there uh, what is the doubt in that no i'm asking why is it brought to that temperature specifically because that would be normal uh, environmental temperature of the uh, uh, driver or occupant in a vehicle uh, when it is radar see uh, generally these vehicles all are air conditioned vehicle so the humidity is what does that uh, uh, normal uh, comfort level so uh, right and uh, the temperature is what is the comfort as per the uh, uh, us norms the environmental norms so these are something steadily uh, uh, steady state so that uh, all uh, um, no this meteorological uh, um, aspect uh, uh, would influence the measurements so that is the reason why uh, it is so you, after all you have seen uh, uh, dummy is an instrument right you have got so many measurement points and sensors mounted embedded with that so unless and until uh, you are conditioning uh, them for a steady state uh, before going for uh, that uh, uh, you will not get a uh, real time effect so that's the reason why uh, i think you have uh, uh, that is mentioned so i think it is mentioned somewhere here Right. It's a dummy preparation, right? <clears throat> Where was it? Uh, what is the slide number you said? Sir, number seven. Number seven, sir. Number seven is this slide. Not seeing that. Is this in this slide? Sir, I'm still seeing page number 20. Oh, okay, okay. There's some uh, 
data lag there i bet yeah we have seen that in a place where we had uh, um this uh, conditions to be uh, done uh, at least for 16 hours that condition uh, to be maintained and uh, the test is uh, set Yeah, you got that, right? Whatever that, yeah, this is slide number 11, it is there. Are you able to see the slide now? The no, dummy sir. vehicle are kept in temperature controlled area where the temperature is maintained at 20 to 22.2 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity of, um, you're not able to see it, right? Just a minute, yeah. I was doing it in uh, other, so here, right, I have to go back to slide number 11. So here is what is that you are saying, right? You are seeing now. Is it not? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So the, this is in a, uh, the crash dummy preparation, right? It is needed. Uh, the, uh, see, it's like, you know, any vehicle crash test, uh, similar like, you know, you see there are vehicle other, uh, tire uh, test, vehicle handling test, all you do. So you are required to do your test for the tire performance, not by mounting the new tires. It has to be, uh, you know, um, acquainted. So you have to ride those tires with some 100 kilometers mandatory, then you go for it. So something like that. So these dummies and this, uh, uh, all the precursor precautions that you are taking it to bring in an, an, uh, um, an actual conditioning required. Right, that's why these are there. So these all are from the uh, test procedure recommended by uh, uh, the agency, uh, Insurance Institute for uh, Safety. Uh, so um, from there, uh, this documentation I have uh, taken and then uh, gone through and prepared uh, systematically for you. Right. So I think your uh, your question is that and answer, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. So please read word by word. I have not missed any of them. <clears throat> All uh, the requirement for this is done. So if you have understood this similar thing only, there will be uh, fine tuning that if we are having different uh, configuration of the test to be conducted, for example. So uh, it is from side uh, impact by the bullet vehicle, right? Then what does the instruments that go in? So like uh, it is easier for you to further to oh, see. So for every test configuration, how they are prepared all to be done. At least now for the understanding purpose of this crash test, this one test is sufficient for us uh, to go through. So the remaining test uh, would be executed meticulously in the similar way of preparing the test condition uh, as well as uh, making the necessary measurements with the advent of uh, high-end instrumentation and high-speed cameras. So this is all something uh, we should have in uh, mind when you talk about this crash. Okay, uh, good. Uh, and then uh, we will uh, meet again in the afternoon, uh, uh, three o'clock, three to four hour lecture also this week, uh, as we have not, we lost one period in the last week, right? So I will take today three to four again, uh, and then uh, we will have tomorrow morning as it is D1 slot. Uh, so that uh, today evening uh, we'll have seventh lecture and then tomorrow eighth lecture. Uh, and you would be able to make up that module three uh, requirement in the next week. Uh, before your CAT, uh, your midterm test, uh, I would be able to complete three modules uh, for your examination, right? So with that note, uh, let me stop today's class. And uh, I 